Like every cat ain't gotta maintain the cap You can make change, don't change for that Tell the whole truth, get paid for that Bet you never fall off, you was made for that You gotta be who you really be, shine from the inside The city with my day one. I ain't gotta worry, cause they A1. What ain't in the field, then you can't come with us. My little shawty going stupid, going straight dumb with us. I'm a big time, still humble in the hood. Gotta keep it positive on nothing but the good. When I'm on vacation, I be stunting like I should. Got a real queen falling, she gon' stumble on the wood. And I still be doing business with my brother, them. And I know that if I got it, I'ma cover them. And I know that if I need it, they gon' give it back. Guys, you might as well say this is the last startup I'm gonna have in this E92 M3. Um, the buyer is coming in a little bit. We have no lights on the dash, everything situated, only 42,000 miles, clean title. Um, this is by far the cleanest example of an E92 M3 I've ever owned or ever seen, to be honest. This thing has come such a long way. We fixed all of the front end damage. This thing is running and driving absolutely perfect. My wife is literally driving this car every single day. And it's crazy to see this car kind of go, but we have big plans for the E91 M3. And I see there's no reason to keep both these M3s. Eventually, that E91 that we have in the backyard, it is a 328, but eventually it's going to be an M3. And since that one is going to be like a converted high mileage M3, I don't mind doing crazy things to it. This is more of a collector's car. Like I said, guys, only 42,000 miles, clean title, competition package with the Red Guts individual. Like it has a bunch of nice options and a very desirable specs. So for me, it kind of hurt me to take off these competition wheels. It hurt me to like take off the stock exhaust and everything like that, just because a car like this deserves to go into a collector's hands or somebody that wants to like treasure this and take care of her and baby her but hopefully hopefully in the near future when i mean near future i mean hopefully in the next month we should be able to get an e90 m3 and we're gonna be swapping that wagon so hopefully pretty soon so it's not gonna be like a sad video mainly because we're gonna be getting another one of these chassis very 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 soon but it is kind of sad because this particular car is leaving us and i love it so 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 much my wife loves this car so much the e92 m3 is the reason we actually met for those of you guys who don't know not this one in particular my old E92 M3. The M3 is just legendary in my life. Anyways, the buyer should be here within an hour, so I do have to start cleaning out the car, and I do need to head down to the bank just to get some money for some other things before he actually gets here. Thankfully, the car is smogged, ready to go. So without further ado, this is our last drive. All right, guys, so my man James <laughs> just copped an empty. Bro, congratulations, dude. This look is super sick. This is my final goodbye. Oh, man, bro. All right, bro. Drive safe, dude. Take it easy. Take care of her. Sheesh. Oh, that's all she wrote. Oh, it sounds so good. We're going we're gonna to be getting another one, boys. <laughs> We're gonna be getting an E90 for the for the wagon, but I mean, ah. Oh. And as of this point, this is the next day, and we're here with the Supra. The M3 is officially gone, and it sucks. It sucks, but you guys know what the mission is. On top of the fact that we're trying to experience and build so many different BMWs, the goal by the end of this year is to own an Audi R8, preferably, obviously, the new one. That would be absolutely ideal. The one that we test drove in the last video, and our first car to take the first step, a huge step towards R8 was our E92 Competition M3. That being said, it's still a bittersweet moment. That car was absolutely amazing. We perfected absolutely everything. And speaking of perfection, um, we're, we're here with the Supra. And as you guys know, we pulled out all the damage that has to do with this quarter panel that lines up with the door. Now that the door closes, everything lines up really, really, really good um, in terms of the front gaps and everything. Everything looks absolutely perfect there. The side skirt is off of the car right now. It's not Oh, no, now it's completely off of the car. The sky, the sky skirt, as of this point, doesn't matter right now, uh, mainly because this damage right over here, this damage um, is honestly unacceptable. So uh, again, you guys, you live and you learn, you try out new things. So normally when I have bad quarter panel damage, I usually take it to my uh, body shop guy. You normally just pull it out as much as you can, put Bondo and fiberglass on it. Uh, this time I actually took it to a frame guy. He pulled everything out. And uh, I mean, for the most part, guys, uh, the damage, 
damage that was pushing this part inside of the cabin um this was all fixed very 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 nicely like honestly i think he put like some kind of block over here and yeah, he ended up pulling it all out so, so in terms of this right here it's perfectly straight the door closes perfectly well it seals really 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 nicely um so now that we have it all pulled out i shouldn't have paid more money for him to pull all this out because obviously the majority of the money that i paid to repair this quarter panel um was not to actually just pull it out to pull it out probably talking like 700 um to a thousand dollars but the fact that i paid 1400 dollars um is kind of absurd and that's because i wanted him to pull out as much of this as possible to get it ready for either paint or bondo unfortunately um as much as he pulled this out this is by no means good standards for me i'm not really happy with this gap right here it's actually pretty 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 bad again the gap Gaps on this side look really good, uh, but the gaps over here, it's just honestly unacceptable. And honestly, I really wanted to save some money and just slap on Bondo and fiberglass, but with such a nice car and this gas cap gap, um, I did not want to have poor work done to this car. That being said, guys, I did go ahead and buy an entirely new quarter panel. I chopped it off of another car like right back here and uh, I believe up to like right here. Unfortunately, he didn't have it the cut that far. He had it like right over here. It's not a big deal, a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of Bondo here is not a big deal. You're not gonna be able to really see that. But at least all of this, this shape over here, um, where the side skirt sits, all of that, where the gas cap gaps are, the door gaps, all that stuff, and where the side skirt mounts, all that's gonna be replaced with a brand new quarter panel. So yeah, the Supra is not really heavily damaged. Um, it's just more of the fact that there's damage that I personally cannot fix. But when we do get the new quarter panel, I'm gonna try to see if I can head down to the shop and actually film the whole process. Because honestly, guys, the whole point of doing all these builds is to not only just build cars and get rid of them or build cars and enjoy them. The whole point of also doing this and this journey is to learn things. And if I'm not really learning things and I'm just constantly paying people to do the work, um, especially major work like that, um, I, I don't really Really feel like it's a benefit for me and, and also I can help show some of you guys if I could just take this step forward and just ask them so I'm gonna go ahead and ask the next person that's actually gonna put on the new quarter panel on this car um, if I could film him so then I can show you guys every step of the process on that quarter panel and how it's supposed to be properly repaired because I don't know the first thing about removing a quarter panel de-skinning it and putting on a new one I would love to know but I have no idea and this is not a car that I want to start on this is this is a very expensive car so anyways now that you guys know the update on the super we we are waiting on a new quarter panel. I already ordered it, so that's all gravy in the Navy. He's gonna be cutting it, shipping it before the end of the weekend, so that is a huge plus. Um, the M3 is officially gone, but it's also gonna allow us to make room for our new E90 M3 that we're on the lookout for. So uh, yeah, we're still parting out the wagon. Again, if you guys need any parts, like an engine, transmission, front dif uh, front differential, I got exit, so many parts on uh, the wagon itself in the backyard. If you guys need any parts, everything's going really, really, really cheap. I sold a lot of things on eBay. Again, I'll show you guys a full cost of how much I bought the wagon for the breakdown of that, um, how much we get the M3 for, uh, the, the, the whatever else we part out of that car, the breakdown of that. And I'll show you guys the total wagon cost build in the end. But yeah, we are looking for E90 M3. Wish me luck, guys. Fingers crossed that I get one locally. That would be ideal. And hopefully with like side damage because that would be the best damage for us because technically we need a lot of the things from the rear end and all, uh, pretty much everything from the front end. Um, so side damage is the most ideal. Also, that being said, guys, as soon as I get the E90 M3, it's gonna be posted on the page Patreon, just like how I announced when I sold the E92 M3 and when I got when I ordered the quarter panel for the for the Supra and, and all the big updates, I'm posting it literally within the hour of me making the decision and also with your guys' help because you guys are also helping me make those decisions on my Patreon. Link's gonna be down below. But yes, as of right now, guys, I've been racking up so many modifications for the 328, like so, I think over a thousand dollars in modifications to upgrade to our daily and also some maintenance because uh, yeah, we need to do a lot more maintenance on that thing. Uh, I, the wheel pretty much much falling off like like I'm not even joking we'll get into that hopefully in another video but as of today's video I want to take some more things off of that wagon I want to strip it down as much as we can just because as soon as we get that E90 M3 we're gonna have a lot of work cut out for ourselves because we're gonna be stripping down two cars swapping everything over I mean obviously the biggest thing was getting that engine transmission out and I'm still trying to sell this thing and get rid of it so we, and yet we can have all the space we need for the E90 M3 so yeah let's head to the backyard and start stripping the E91 
So you guys saw us remove everything off that E91 in terms of the front end. I don't want to remove the seats or anything just like that because I don't really have the space to store seats and I don't want to leave it outside and just in case it rains or anything like that. So I'm going to keep the interior intact, remove the side skirts, the fenders, mostly everything off the front end um, that will, you know, it doesn't matter. We did leave the front suspension on. So at least we have a rolling chassis. So now honestly, the next thing I want to get done is just honestly start taking apart this engine. We have so many things in the front of this thing. We have so many things in the back of this thing. I want to pretty much just get this engine to the bare bone. So it'd be easier to get rid of this engine and sell the engine and also just junk this trans because this trans is shifting really hard in second gear. I might even pull out the Megatronics for the heck of it just to see how that looks. I've only pulled off a transmission one time with my boy Blake. So uh, uh, I'm assuming it's going to be the same process as an automatic. But yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and start taking off as much things as possible. So the goal now is to actually get this transmission upside down. I'm gonna try to drain as much fluids out of it as possible and try to remove the Megatronics and just see what is going on with this transmission. It's shifting hard in second gear. I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart and see, does a messed up gasket inside cause that issue? If it has a perfectly good gasket and it's still slipping in second gear, um, then honestly, I'm never, ever, ever gonna try to fix another transmission ever again. But if I see a gasket blown inside of this, that's probably the reason why this transmission is shifting hard in second gear. back for pretty much day two or three. This video has been kind of broken down in a couple days, but uh, basically we got the transmission in the truck. Unfortunately, it leaked oil down into the concrete overnight and uh, I didn't realize the bed could leak. I didn't really think that one through. I thought the bed could only leak from the back, but apparently it can leak from the front, has drainage ports. So um, yes, we have to clean up the driveway heavily once we get rid of this transmission. But any results, at least this is looking a lot, lot, lot better. Um, so as of right now, I do have somebody coming for that front drive shaft. So I need to figure out a way to get that drive shaft off. And then before I actually take it apart more of this motor, I want to take apart the Megatronics off that transmission because that's worth 300 bucks. Again, I'm selling things on eBay and I'm doing a full price breakdown on everything so I can kind of show you guys how much money you could possibly make on just parting out your own broken car. But yes, before he actually gets here, because he's gonna be here in like five or 10 minutes, let me try to get that front drive shaft off. Thank the Lord, guys, we got that thing off. He should be here any minute, and uh, we're getting about 60 bucks for this little guy. They go for about 100 bucks on eBay, but 60 bucks locally beats eBay any day of the week. Now, let's go ahead and try to get this Megatronics out of this transmission. All 
Alright guys, so since this is actually a GM transmission, that's a GM valve body. I've actually never actually had an issue with the GM valve body before. It was actually a ZF valve body I normally have issues with. Um, so that being said, uh, yeah, I don't really know what's exactly wrong with this. I know you have to possibly replace this guy. I know these guys, you normally replace it and then those ones over there. Um, but honestly, nothing seems cracked. So again, it could be the transmission just slipping. Um, these fluids does seem like they've just been recently replaced as well as the pan and the gasket make like all those look really 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 new as well as the filter um so i'm thinking he already tried servicing this transmission and it was still acting up so it's a good thing we checked we didn't try selling the transmission like this the valve body nine times out of ten as long as it's not throwing a transmission code is always good so that that alone is going to be easy to ship worth about you know three to four hundred dollars so that's a huge 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 come up right there and this guy we're just taking out a pick a pull and just junkie um the guy did come he wanted that he also wanted the transmission pants he's giving me like 60 bucks for both of them i told him like 10 bucks for the pan 50 bucks for that um so as of this point i'm gonna start taking off some things off of this engine again just trying to get it stripped down as much as possible get it cleaned up and put it up for sale we want 500 dollars for it but believe it or not when it's fully stripped down people are more willing to buy it than when it's all put together like this i don't know why I, all the ones on ebay are just sold fully stripped down i guess maybe because it's easier to look at it and service it maybe not 100 percent sure <laughs> you guys let me know down below but yeah without further ado let's go ahead and just remove all these accessory things And guys, a few hours later, we got the whole engine wiring harness on. We got pretty much everything off the transmission engine that we need, including the Megatronics. Uh, I believe that's a transfer or something. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, this is the front diff. It's actually a lot smaller than I thought. And this is worth like $400. So super happy about that. That will easily be able to be shipped out. This is again, easily be able to ship out. Uh, that's the other side of the differential. I think that's sold separately. Um, alternator is a brand new um, alternator, which I'm super happy about. That should bring in some good money. Um, that is is a believe an AC pump that also brings in some good money and then as for this guy this guy brings in a lot of good money as well this is like the transfer case or whatever um, but the only issue is, is this thing's very heavy and I don't think I could sell it uh, you know on eBay or something so I'll probably sell it locally for stupid cheap just because um, honestly I just can't ship something like that now the good news is I believe somewhere on here I believe somewhere on this side there's an actual motor for this thing and that motor alone is worth 150 so I'm probably gonna take off the motor sell it on eBay and then sell the rest of the thing locally for like 50 bucks just try to get rid of it you guys saw earlier that I sold the front drive shaft. I have everything else off of this engine. It's looking so, so, so good. I've actually never taken apart an engine like this. It looks like I'm part of a dismantling yard right now because of an engine on a tire all covered up professionally. It's exactly how they do it um, at dismantler shops. And yeah, this is an all-wheel drive N52 motor now stripped to the bare bone and it's looking really good. This harness, I'm not really sure if it sells um, just because like who really needs an N52 harness, but there is some O2 sensors on there and random stuff like that. So I'll probably take a picture of this list it off for like really 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 cheap just so i can get rid of it and the goal is just try to see how much money we can get off all these parts you guys know that i bought the car for twelve hundred dollars i just want to put it out there i'm already over twelve hundred dollars we've already made twelve hundred dollars off the car but we have so much more money to make off this thing and so much money to make off the e90 m3 interior like the, the underneath the interior obviously we're gonna be using the door panels um and all that stuff but like the wiring uh the modules stuff like that that we're gonna be keeping on r328 we're not gonna be needing on the m3 so we're able to sell all that good stuff so so far into the this 
this build, we are at zero dollars. Didn't cost us a penny for the frame and we have an engine sitting right over here as well. I think we do it pretty good for ourselves. For those of you guys who are wondering how I'm listing my eBay parts, you're gonna have a link down below to my eBay store. If any of you guys want any of this stuff, it's gonna be very cheap. And at the same time, you guys can see how I list up my things on eBay and how I sell my things on eBay for those of you guys who wanna get into eBay and stuff like that. As in this moment, I'm gonna head down to AutoZone, probably get some brake cleaner stuff like that for all this kind of stuff because I wanna clean everything up. I wanna put some like tube coverings and stuff so it doesn't leak out in the packaging um, so that I'll be able to mail this stuff out. But yeah, I'm gonna first take a shower. I have a couple packages I need to ship out that we sold yesterday and today. I catch y'all when I'm all cleaned up. And a few hours later, we are back in the garage. The garage is a lot more cleaner than it was. You have the engine just sitting there. Probably gonna be taking it to my boy's place uh, a little bit later because he actually has space for something like this. So I'm gonna be listing this up for sale. If someone buys it, you know, soon, that'd be great. But if not, it'll be a proper storage. I don't wanna put something like this outside just in case water gets all up inside of it. I don't think that's a good thing. But yeah, it is 10.58 right now. I did take a lunch break. I did take a chill break and all that stuff because uh, a lot's been going on. But we are back to try to make some money so we can put it towards the E90. M3. I actually found three E90 M3s that are on uh, a few auction websites like IAA, Copart, and a few, a few clean title auctions as well. So I have my eyes out on all of those. So hopefully one of them ends up being pretty cheap. Honestly, all of them have low mileage. One of them is like 60 something thousand miles. The other one is like 70 something miles. And the other one is like 80 something thousand miles. So they all actually very, very, very low mileage, which is a great thing because if I get a low mileage car, we'll have low mileage suspension, low mileage engine, low mileage transmission. Obviously we're going to service everything, but it's once we put it all into the E91, so it's gonna be so sick. But yeah, guys, I got some brushes um, from Lowe's. These are kind of like steel brushes, so I'm gonna be trying to, you know, pretty much rub off all the oil stains on pretty much the AC compressor uh, and anything else, honestly, that's worth money. Like, for example, this guy right here, it is super gunked up, and if we can clean that up and make it look a lot better, that would be ideal. And on the other side of the Super, I did get some purple power and, uh, you know, brake cleaner. Brake cleaner is very essential for stuff like this. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let me go ahead and sit you guys down. I got a lot of work on my hands to try to get all this stuff cleaned up. I did shower, um, but I'm probably gonna get dirty again, but it's worth it. I'm just too excited. I don't want to go to bed. I want to get all this stuff listed up. I'm trying to make that money so we can make this build become a reality. I'm just so stoked. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and start cleaning these bad boys up. And about a few hours later, guys, nothing is here anymore. Thank the Lord. Other than that, that thing just keeps leaking and honestly is such a pain to clean. I'll probably just try to sell this thing locally and just throw it in the backyard for now. It is worth like 200 bucks on eBay, but after fees and shipping, it's probably gonna cost me like 60 bucks shipping. I'm probably just gonna take like 50 or 100 bucks locally for that bad boy, even though that is a front differential and that is high in demand. But other than that, this is also gonna go into the backyard just because of how big it is and I can't probably ship this without putting it on like a plaque or something. So major things like this and engines and stuff like that as people without dismantling licenses it's gonna be very 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 difficult to ship things like this but I mean it's possible it's definitely possible if you find like a fright company or something like that but I'm actually not gonna go through that I actually packed up everything else the AC compressor all those other things the harnesses for the engine literally everything else for that engine is packed away in these boxes all labeled ready to go I, then the rest of the stuff I wrapped it up and I put it right in that bin and some things over here as well this is also a little sneak peek to what's going on guys in uh, an upcoming video I am super excited excited for these bad boys. When I'm telling you guys we're building an E91 M3, I'm taking this build so serious, guys. Like, I'm super serious about it. This is gonna make the job 10 times easier. I am sweating so, so much. Oh my God. I need to go take another shower. And it's the next morning, guys. Good morning. I mean, it's for this video, I mean, it's not technically good morning anymore, but good morning to me, you know what I'm saying? So end of the day, end of the day, guys, um, the M3 is sold. The E92 M3 is sold. Uh, the, so basically how it went down to kind of give you guys a story um, is that one of you guys have been kept 
on hitting me up. He's like, hey man, I have a 335 IS. I've been trying to sell this thing. As soon as I sell it though, the day I sell it, I want to be able to buy your car. And I'm like, bro, there's a situation with the title because basically the miles, uh, like it only has 42,000 miles, but what, when I got it, it had like 39,000 miles. Um, so basically when I went to the DMV and I registered it with 39,000 miles, um, something happens where an extra zero got added. And then I got a title in the mail that said 390,000 miles, which obviously brings down the value from 40,000 um, down to like maybe 15,000. So uh, I obviously sent that title back and they're fixing it. They did get the mileage corrected, but they haven't sent me out a title. It can take up to nine months. So I told them like, hey man, um, honestly, I'm not ready to sell it. I don't have the title. I don't really feel comfortable selling a car without a title. And uh, you know, we kind of let that go. A few weeks go by, he keeps hitting me up, keeps hitting me up, keeps hitting me up. He's like, hey man, I really want this car. I, I saw the videos. He did all the major maintenance. The car looks amazing. Um, and I as long as it's a clean title, I trust the fact that you'll be able to mail me the title as soon as it gets here. And I was like, of course, dude, um, let me just call my DMV lady and see if we can make it happen. Long story short, my DMV lady calls me back saying that yes, we can actually submit a duplicate title for him. Um, so he got a duplicate title uh, mailed out to him, which is perfect. And as soon as the original title um, gets like, you know, processed, it's actually just gonna be uh, deleted, I guess, because um, once a duplicate's registered, the primary title is no longer valid. Um, so yeah, he got the car and he got it exactly for what I think is worth for me. You guys know the goal is to get the R rate. We got that car, the, the E92 on three for roughly about 16 to $17,000. About $8,000 later, everything got sorted on that car. Yes, $8,000. We did do a lot of paint work, body work, frame work, um, raw bearings, a lot of major things. And that pretty much racked it up another $8,000. But end of the day, guys, still at like $26,000, we ended up selling it for $40,000, which I'm really, really, really happy about. And that is definitely gonna be helping us get closer to our goal for the Audi R8 and also helps us get the E90 M3 that we need for the E91 M3 project. So I'm super hyped for that. I believe his name is James, so shout out to him. I mean, the E92 M3 that I sold him um, is actually currently at the market. It's worth about $45,000 without the actuators or rod bearings done um, because the only 42,000 miles clean title LCI um, with the package it had is going for around $45,000. The thing is for me, I know it's been an accident history. Um, he also knows it has an accident history. Um, I obviously, we did major maintenance, actuators are done, rub bearings are done, but I didn't want to tax because obviously I got it for a good deal. And end of the day, as long as he's happy and I'm happy and we can move forward with the new projects, um, it's honestly a win-win. I mean, this is this car was a blessing since the day I got it, ends up being a blessing on the day that it leaves. Um, so end of the day, better things to come. But without further ado, that is gonna have to conclude the video. I'm trying to be as transparent with you guys as possible. I hope it's not like um, making me come off any kind of way, but, but yeah, I love you guys so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.